In today's video, we will be turning this Rhino model into this beautiful, realistic rendering, covering adding this nice and soft shadow, like from the inside of the building, as well as a quick tip with texturing that can be applicable in almost any situation. So let's get started. So the model that we'll be using comes from SketchUp Warehouse. You can of course use your own model, but if you're interested in using this exact project, you can download it from the description below. So the way we're going to import this is simply by downloading a model. So far, only up to 2019 version works. Maybe in the future, we might be able to use more recent version of the file, but for now, we'll be downloading 2019. Before we get started, if you're a SketchUp user, make sure to check out OU Graphics for his SketchUp tutorial as well as Photoshop post-production tips and tricks. Now back to Rhino. We'll start by simply opening the project file. Now what we get is the 3D model in Rhino. Now one thing we need to keep in mind is that this model comes in a mesh, so all the snaps don't work anymore. So just make sure to enable vertex snapping in order for you to model smoothly. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and create a podium. So I'll type in box and drag from one corner to the other to create a thin podium like that. And then I'll just use scale 1D and then extend this out a little bit. There you go. Now I'll select both the extended podium as well as the ramp and apply a material from the V-Ray Asset Editor. We'll go to the default material library. We'll use Laminate A01. So to import this, I'll just simply right-click and choose Apply to Selection. This actually applies the material and adds it to our material palette. Now, once that is done, we need to make sure that the texture is mapped correctly. So as you can see in the preview, the base is a lot bigger than the top. So we'll go ahead over to the texture mapping tab and choose apply box mapping. So since the texture, I mean the model is supposed to be scaled, we'll simply magnify the texture a little bit. So I'll just use an arbitrary dimension for now, maybe something like that. And we can adjust as we go. So don't worry too much about it for now. So once we hit enter, you can see that the texture is now more consistent throughout all the geometries, but it still looks a little bit strange. So we'll go ahead and enable show mapping to bring up our mapping widget. So what, base, what this box basically represents is basic dimensions of our texture. So one unit of this face is the entirety of the JPEG or Bitmap image that the texture is referring to. So for now, I'm going to shrink this in this dimension and enlarge it in the X dimension, like so. So now that this looks pretty good, I'll hit Escape to get rid of the widget and try rendering this. OK, so that's how it looks right now. The house has no texture, but now we can see that the base is mapped pretty nicely. Now we'll go ahead and add some more life into the scene. So first off, I'm going to be adding some plane, a bit of like a tabletop on which this model is uh, resting. So I'll simply go ahead and type in, or I could use the V-Ray infinite plane. So I'll just simply click on it. And once the plane appears, I'll be moving it down so that it aligns to the bottom. So I'll move, choose vertical, and then align it to the base. Oh, sorry. I have the project on, so it came to the zero. But we'll try that again, and then put it right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and type in lock so that we don't accidentally move this around. Actually, one thing I want to do before that is that I'm going to be adding another material here. And that'll be material palette and choose plastic. And we'll use regular plastic leather. And then right click to apply. And there we go. So once that is done, we can try previewing it. And that looks pretty good. So now there are a couple of things I want to do in order to make this look more like a model that's shot in a model shop or a photo studio. 
I'm going to be adding more intense lighting. And that is going to be done through using rectangular light tool in V-Ray. So once you select it, it prompts you to select a couple of points. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the length of this project and then the width, like so. So I'm going to make sure that it's perfectly horizontal. And then bring it up. And once it's high enough, I need to make sure that the arrow is pointing down. So I'll choose one of the axes and turn it 180 degrees. Okay, now that's once that is done. One thing I might also want to do is that I want to add lighting in the house within the model. So I'll choose rectangular lights again, and then go ahead and draw it in a similar fashion. So one thing I want to make sure is that the light ends within the interior. So it'll be around at this point because the glass comes right up to here. And at this point, with this selected, I'll be running interactive rendering. Now, what interactive end rendering is good for is that you can kind of dynamically adjust your lighting setup as you go. So for example, now that we have our light intersecting with the roof, I'm going to slowly move it down until the light comes on within the building. So once I let go, oh, it already worked. So you can see the interior of a building is lit up. Now it seems like the lighting from the top is a little too bright. So I'll go ahead, choose a light, and then reduce the intensity a little bit at a time. OK, that looks pretty good. And for the lighting in the interior, I want to reduce it a little bit as well. So I'll start by going into it a little bit. Seems like 20 is a good amount. And for the interior lighting, I want to make it a little bit yellow. So I'm going to go into the color of it and then choose slightly orangey, gray, white color. To me, that seems a little bit too yellow. So I'll be bringing it a little bit close to white and then maybe a little bit closer to red as well. OK, that looks pretty good. But make sure to, one thing that we want to get make sure to fix is that the light from the back actually appears completely black. And from the front, it's just completely white. So one thing we need can do is click into the V-Ray editor and choose the option where we can make the light plane invisible. And the moment we tap that, light plane is already invisible. Now with that checked, we can now go ahead and zoom out a little bit and frame our project so that it looks pretty good on, so that we can position it the way we want to display it. Okay. That looks like a pretty good angle to me. So I'll, at this point, I'll stop the interactive rendering and save the camera. In order to do so, I'll type in named views and choose save the view as, and I'll save it as regular perspective. Now I'll dock it right here so we can access it. If you're wondering how I made the named views into a list format, you simply have to right click in the empty space and choose list as the viewing option. You can choose thumbnail and you can get a little bit of preview. Sometimes the thumbnail previews take a lot of time in the project setup. So I like to choose list, but it's totally up to your preference as well. Now, once that is set up, I would like to add some more life into it. So at this point, I'll be importing in our 3D people and trees. For today's demonstration, I've just imported Archihacks 3D people and 3D trees. You can get these from our website in the link below. One great thing about these models is that they come in three types. One is original mesh, proxied version, as well as the blocked proxy. So the benefits of proxies are explained in more detail in this video on the top right corner. So if you're interested, you can check that out as well. For now, I'll be using the original mesh because our scene is small and manageable. So I'll go ahead and delete some unnecessary assets. We're getting really close to releasing uh, our first update to our 3D model people. We'll be adding a couple more seated and bicycle as well as family models. 
And if you've already purchased these models, you'll get a free update. And we guarantee that all the models, that, all the purchases that you make will be updated for free for your lifetime. So you can be assured when you're purchasing a product from us. In order to populate the scene, I'm going to isolate our objects and the terrain. So I'm going to go ahead and select the terrain model and our entourage. And I'll type in isolate. So since our geometries are in separate pieces, and especially now that the top plane is a mesh, we need to make sure that we can create this into a consistent Rhino surface. So in order to do so, I'm going to go to the top view and type in the command drape and drag a small window just around the corners of our building. And that creates a homogeneous plane that kind of wraps around all geometries. Now we can use this as a proxy on which the, pop, um, the objects can be populated. So we'll select all the objects, raise them above, and then scatter them all around the site. There's a handy plugin we released a couple weeks ago, which is called the Random Transform. And this plugin allows you to quickly distribute models across the selection. So make sure to check that out as well. So I'll type in random move and then offset them slightly in the X axis, like so. Maybe a little bit more. That looks pretty good. And now once they're in random places, I'm going to be using a little script called drop objects to surface. I'll link it in the description as well. All you really need to do is drag and drop it into the Rhino window and follow the prompts. So the first, We'll choose a plane to be populated. So that'll be the initial plane that we created using drape. And then select all the objects that are hovering above. All right, once the objects have been dropped, we just have to make sure that the trees are not intersecting with the building. So I'll be moving them about a little bit. Set them offside a little bit. Okay. And let's, and let's put some more on this side over here. And maybe we'll show, we'll put a small tree in the courtyard here. Not sure if that's the original design, but just for the demonstration purpose, I'll locate it there. All right, that looks pretty nice. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and select one person and move him to the balcony of the building. So I'll choose the bottom of this model and then select somewhere close where we can snap. And once the guy is in the building, we'll move him around just a little bit so he's in a good place. Another thing we can do to add randomness is by selecting all the objects and typing in random rotate. This is included in the plugin, so make sure to check that out as well. Okay, once that is done, I think we are almost ready. I'm gonna go back to the camera position that we have saved by double clicking it and then I'll make sure to delete the plane assistance plane that we created. And let's try rendering. One more thing I strongly encourage you to do is use depth of field. And the way you enable that is by going into camera and choose this option. Then we can pick the point to choose the point of focus. So click on um, the icon to enable the command and then choose the point in the model where you want to focus your camera on. So for me, um, I'm going to select this person right here and I'll go back to the settings to adjust the level of blur. And the way we do that is by adjusting this slider. I'm going to set it to one and see how that looks. Okay, that looks a little too blurry. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the blurriness a little bit. So let's try 0 0.5. I'll be using 0 0.75. Let's get somewhere close to that. And for today's example, it should yield a pretty good result. But make sure to tweak values and get the right value for your project. And another thing that I might want to do is to, so instead of going to post-production, I might just use the V-Ray's built-in global settings. 
and here I'll be reducing down the highlight burn a little bit to reduce the burn on the side, this window. And to compensate for that, I'll be increasing the contrast a little bit and increase the brightness just a little bit as well. And it looks pretty good. You can compare by just taking it on and off. Maybe it's a little bit too dark, but less. Okay, yep. Looks pretty good. And I think the scene is ready for final render. So I'll go back to our V-Ray settings and I'll choose not interactive and not progressive setting with low quality and with NVIDIA AI. The difference between the two is that NVIDIA AI is a lot faster, but a little bit less accurate. And V-Ray takes a bit more time, but it gives you a little bit more crisp de details. So choose for your own purpose. And for output, we'll keep it at 1920 by 1080 and choose render. And there's our result. Now we have this nice and soft shadow throughout the uh, whole model. And we also have nice little people and trees populating around the building. The building is well lit from inside, which makes it look an extra bit more lively. If you guys have any questions or got stuck somewhere, leave it in the comments and I'll get to you as soon as I can. If you guys liked it, give it a like. If you guys loved it, subscribe. Or until next time, take care.